currents of life in America flow free and untrammeled in the mainstream of a peaceful existence, a way of life designed to provide a full measure of happiness and security to a free people. These are the ways of peace. Let us remember that peace is neither easily come by nor easily safeguarded. Let us remember that the process of history enjoins us to protect the peace with all our strength, lest our people again look on the face of war. Next time, perhaps, in our own homeland. But lest we forget and forgetting become victims to our own complacency. Let us review those dark days when peace on earth had vanished and goodwill to man was turned to hate. Return to earth, and for the victor, it is a day for rejoicing. Six years of toil, sweat, and tears, and now peace comes to England. Here in America, our manner of spontaneous celebration. These are the Russians, as they herald the end of the war. Crowded streets, public squares packed full in Amsterdam, in Prague, in Warsaw, to celebrate the return of peace. Paris on the day of liberation, an end to gloom and despair.
Yet, how can they forget when all about them lie bitter reminders? This land that once was bright is now this. Death and chaos have walked here. Their smell still hangs heavy in the air. These people, once sharing the little joys and sorrows common to people the world over, now this. These are the defeated. This, the self-styled super race. These are their leaders, seen once as invincible demigods, now dishonored and disowned. Their country, once a nation justly proud of its accomplishments in commerce, science, and art. Now, this. Laid waste in retaliation by a world enraged and unprovoked depression. Yet, what is victory in this age of total warfare? Cities bombed beyond recognition. National economies bankrupt peoples dispossessed, countryside laid waste. But the enemy did not touch our shores. Our land does not carry the scars that for generations to come will deface our allies. Let us highly resolve to keep the peace. But as we dedicate ourselves to the preservation of peace, let us measure our strength as a nation. Land mass that spans a continent. A young giant of a nation within whose boundaries are found riches beyond the limits of computation. Look to the power of the earth itself. Vast farm areas. Rich mines and oil fields giving us wealth in minerals turned to the uses of modern living. Coal to fire our furnaces, domestic and industrial. Iron, copper, zinc, manganese, and all the other hidden treasures of the earth to be molded into metals and alloys whose uses are legion. American manufacture, a modern colossus astride the industrial world, giving us in endless profusion the necessities and luxuries of a standard of living that is the envy of the world. But for America's greatest strength, look to the people who inhabit this land, to the life they have made for themselves and their children. Theirs is a proud heritage whose roots are embedded deep in the institutions and traditions established when freedom was but a dream and a hope hidden in the hearts of the first Americans. These, then, are the sources from which we draw our strength and power, giving us a way of life worth fighting for and, if need be, worth dying for. Today, America no longer stands apart, guarded by the bulwarks of two great oceans against the havoc of war. Science has forced us from the periphery of world affairs into the vortex, whirling us into a swift current that rushes headlong toward a common destiny, peace on Earth or total obliteration. With this in mind, 
let us recall to our memories the challenge of a great American patriot, written almost 200 years ago in a time of national crisis. The necessity of the times more than ever calls for our utmost circumspection, deliberation, fortitude, and perseverance. Let us remember that if we suffer tamely a lawless attack upon our liberty, we encourage it and involve others in our doom. Finally, let us call to mind the words of Tom Paine, firebrand of the American Revolution. Those who expect to reap the blessings of freedom must bear the fatigues of supporting it. <laughs>